Welcome everyone, my name is David. I'm leading the global reporting and visualization team here at Logitech. I'm very happy to virtually host this session during which I'll be talking about Logitech's decision to jump on the train to move its BI data infrastructure to the cloud. Now, before we begin, I'll just quickly remind everyone who Logitech is and why data is a core component to all of our products. As some of you might remember, Logitech started with a focus on peripherals for computing devices, but quickly expanded into a number of brands and product categories from the office or your home office to meeting rooms, from your sofa to gaming rooms, or at the birthday party that you're throwing for your kid with his friends. Our goal has always been to connect you to the digital experience that you love by designing products that bring people together. Now that the marketing message is out, you can imagine that with so many products and sources of information, we are today consuming and creating more data than ever. And I'm pretty sure that your company does as well. And that goes without saying, and everyone seems to need the data at the speed of light nowadays. No wonder why we had to rethink our approach to data warehousing and data infrastructure solutions. I'll just give you a couple of seconds to read this one, it's pretty good. But as a data-driven company, we need to make confident and critical decisions using the results of data analysis, from extracting the big picture to deep diving into the details. For what we need the right tool for that we need the right tools to store, transform, expose, and analyze our data. This is necessary to drive business decisions with real world information. Finally, an insight without an audience would be meaningless. Our analysts are then the artists to tell and share compelling stories using data visualization and dashboards. Like for a lot of companies today, our data comes in all different types of shapes and sizes. This slide is just a sample of the data type of data that we capture and analyze today, from low velocity to almost real-time data, structured to unstructured, IoT, device or engineering data, supply chain, finance, HR, sales, marketing, manufacturing, online data, you name it. They are all uh, precious nuggets waiting for us to make sense of it. Now, how can we analyze all these data? How do we equip ourselves to do that now and for the future? First, we thought it'd be good to understand where we were at. So that's what we tried to figure out. And to do that, we had to go through an audit of our e analytics infrastructure. Indeed, in order to measure where we stand and how we can improve, we established these somewhat basic analytics maturity metrics. I will not claim that this will fit every company out there, but that you know gives you an idea, something that you can use and go back to, something to easily measure against. And the reality is, I can't tell you uh, that Logitech is in the third or the fourth box today. What I can tell you though, is that we spent quite some time between the first and the second. Every single organization such as, you know, finance, supply chain, manufacturing, IT, etc., will all be at different level of maturity. And that is okay. It all depends on your objectives and priorities. Now let's be transparent here. We all, we all know it. Data is one of our most precious assets today. That is why we are investing so much to make sense of it. And for that, we need to bring the data to everyone in the company who needs it, give it to them, self-service fashion. As we deal with a lot of data, we need ways to extract insights quickly, enabling data exploration and storytelling through visualization tools. Those cognitive solutions must allow you to move from raw data to actionable data. 
And sometimes, you know, we need to join data from disparate, disparate sources, from your data warehouse, shared repository, local Excel files, third-party APIs, or social media. Data virtualization allows to connect to those sources transparently for your users and store this data in the cloud. This has proven to be very powerful and one of the most required features. Finally, figures and text were only the beginning, for us at least. We needed to be able to analyze the content of images, sounds and videos. For example, to understand what people think of our products and how to improve them. Adventure to the cloud. The cloud enables IT departments to redefine how data services are produced and distributed across the organization. Scalable. Elastic infrastructure means that you are given access to scalable computing capacity in the cloud, eliminating the need to invest in hardware upfront. You can launch as many or as few virtual servers as you need, configure security networking and manage storage. That also enables you to automatically scale up or down your cluster to handle rapid changes rapid changes in requirements or spikes. Efficient. This one is pretty much self-explanatory. Basically, you can turn compute resources on and off. So you only pay for what you use. And also on the storage side, it's rather cheap. Reliable. AWS promises at least 99.99% .99 of service uptime. That's definitely more than I can verify and I'll take it. Governance, data governance is vital to improving data security. Indeed, knowing where your data comes from, where it is, who has access to it, how it is used and how to delete it is definitely key. But data governance also involves oversight of the quality of the data coming into your company, as well as, it, as its use throughout the organization. You need to know when your data is corrupt or inaccurate, when it's not being refreshed or when it's being analyzed out of context. All these scenarios prevent situations that can lead to bad business decisions, loss of business revenue or increase of costs. need for data virtualization. So now let's look into the reasons why we needed and decided to implement data virtualization in the cloud at large tech. This first point is a topic I already covered in a previous slide. However, the power of connecting to disparate um, data sources is not to be underestimated. Data virtualization allows to replace ETL and data duplication in certain cases, which can be time and cost effective. That might sound like something we've all heard a thousand times, but building single source of truth and common definition for our dimension measures and KPIs is something that will save you a lot of headaches and money down the path. At Logitech, more and more, we need access to close to real-time data. Indeed, you can imagine how critical it is for us to know when something goes bad with one of our production line. This is the kind of thing you want to know now, not tomorrow after your daily refresh. Finally, having your data in the cloud and exposing centrally managed and secured data layer was one key element to get business buy-in. On this next slide, I'm just showing you a high level, very high level picture of our solution architecture. This one is uh, probably a couple of you know, months old, so you know, uh, might have changed, but you, you get the concept. So here on the first level, you can see that we're using today uh, Pentao data integration as our primary ETL solution. Next layer is you can see all the different places where today we store our data from AWS, you know, Snowflake, Spark, etc. Next one is uh, the Dinodo virtualization tool that we use, allowing us to connect to and blend data from different data warehouses, repositories, third-party partners, APIs, and so on.
And finally, in purple, you can see the reporting layer with the, some of the technologies that you may, you know, be already familiar with, including Tableau, OBIE, Power BI, etc. So these next slide, I'd like to share, you know, um, a Logitech kind of story uh, on how we got started with Snowflake and the rest of the cloud solution stack. So basically, back a couple of years ago, the cloud was this buzzword that everyone was talking about. The next big thing, the future everyone will be moving to um, as uh, all media platform seem to agree, but um, were we ready or, you know, should we do it? So that's how, you know, we uh, all agreed that we had to uh, an opportunity here to start looking into it and found, we actually found pretty good reasons to start a project around, you know, um, data warehousing in the cloud you know, from on-premise to the cloud. So. We had three objectives and uh, the goal was to confirm that indeed we could, you know, improve the overall speed and performance of our, you know, data warehouse. At the same time, reduce our dependency towards, you know, data extract and rather embrace, you know, live connections as much as, much as we could. And finally, obviously lower our total cost of ownership. It's always a good thing to do. And, and something that helps, you know, buy in, uh, on, on the projects. But anyway, um, after long and sometimes, you know, intense discussions and, this, and negotiations with all involved stakeholders, and, you know, don't minimize that last point, all involved stakeholders, and I'll come back to that, um, we were able to make the necessary compromises and adjustments to make the solution uh, scalable and sustainable. And one more thing indeed, um, this was the critical moment during those meetings um, to have my voice heard, right? My personal additional requirement as reporting and visualization lead was that the reporting layer, you know, your front end layer should be as less as possible impacted by these changes. And these had an impact on all the underlying components from which driver to use or not to use, the syntax used in our queries, the name of our databases and schemas, etc. Everything had to be reviewed, tested, and even then, I mean, we faced unexpected issues as we were, you know, ongoing, transitioning and adopting, you know, the cloud. So definitely my tip here is to make sure that we invite all stakeholder, stakeholders at the table including your solutions provider, you know, so that they can work hand in hand, you know, when required. Now, um, this next slide is to kind of share from a business impact perspective, uh, after now a couple of years running in the cloud, um, the impact um, that we thought would be the more, uh, the most significant to, you know, to share after a couple of years running. Um, so basically what we realized is that we probably gain overall 40 to 70% in performance improvements, really depending on the area and the different tasks that we're running, which is pretty massive. Um, we opened um, new sources of revenue streams, you know, when accessing the data and operational insights, which remained siloed in the past. Uh, also enabling self-service to allow your business analysts to share insightful stories as opposed to waiting on IT deliver the reports by following the old traditional BI approach is definitely a game changer. And last but not least, increasing the trust in data by connecting to certified data models or the famous concept of single source of truth is a must have. From a technical point of view as well, we were able to deliver data and new data sources faster than ever thanks to the speed of the cloud and the data virtualization you know, technologies. By switching to a pay-per-use model, the estimation is that we were able to reduce by 30% our cost of ownership 
approximately. And as you probably understood by now, self-service analytics environment allows for faster business analysis, but also um, reduces the need for IT resources and uh, allow to reallocate these people to different tasks and projects, which is always great. Last piece, data governance being treated as a top priority in the organization that conveys trust in the data, which you must want to have, believe me. To conclude this presentation, I'd like to summarize the benefits by saying that Logitech has embraced the cloud data warehousing and data virtualization as new model, models for innovation through increased efficiency, reliability, and agility. The flexibility to develop unique semantic models by blending data from disparate data sources was required and very much appreciated. The continuous innovation in data governance, costs, and risk controls gave us the possibility to improve our service levels by delivering better quality data faster. And finally, I'd like to highlight the ease of use and scalability of the solutions, enabling a wider audience to consume enterprise data through self-service, and that is definitely a game changer as well. Now, should you want to learn more on cloud data warehousing, data virtualization, and some of the tools presented today, I'll invite you to visit the references currently shared on the screens. And that's about it. That's the story that I wanted to share with you today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, feel free to get in touch if you have any question or if you want to discuss any of the topics covered today. Thank you for watching and I wish you a very nice end of the day. Bye.